I'm Chris, you're watching Fragmental, thanks for joining me. I don't usually jump on the hype train, but today I've bought my ticket, I'm travelling first class on a direct service to Hypeville. So let's check out the most hyped fragrances in my collection. Oh god, that was bad. Some of the fragrances I'm featuring in this video I bought because of the hype. But when there's hype surrounding something, it usually means a lot of people like it, and that usually means it's a pretty good fragrance. So in today's video, I'm showing you seven fragrances that I think have received an unbelievable amount of hype, but that I think are actually worth the hype. Okay, I've hyped it up enough. Let's get started. The first one is one of my all-time favourite designer fragrances, and it was sort of a blind buy because I hadn't smelled the original, but I had smelled the Perfume Parlour version, and it was off the strength of that that I decided to pull the trigger on the original. From Mugler, it's Pure Havan. I enjoyed the Perfume Parlour version of this so much that it was an instant love. I knew straight away that I would be buying a bottle of this and I can even remember exactly where I was and the moment I smelled it. I was on a camping trip, I was near Blackpool and I'd taken a couple of the 13ml Perfume Parlour sprays with me just because they're handy for travelling with and I remember getting up one morning spraying their version of Pure Havan and I just thought, wait, no, this is absolutely incredible and I kind of waited for the first 20 minutes to pass because I thought is it just an amazing opening and it just carried on it was performing and it just remained this beautiful cherry tobacco fragrance so at that point I just thought I, I'm in love with this it's something that I need in my life and up until that point I'd been wearing fragrances that were you know, more like Sauvage, a bit lighter, fresher, more that kind of typical masculine, crowd-pleasing type of scent. So when I smelled Perfume Pals version of Pure Havan, I just thought, I love how, how sweet and deep and resinous it is. I didn't really have an idea that fragrances could, could be like that. So I loved it straight away. And to this day, those are the types of fragrances that I do tend to gravitate more towards. So with Pure Havan, you get this gorgeous cherry tobacco accord with honey and patchouli. It's a really lovely take on the original Amen DNA. In fact, I prefer this to the original Amen. And I think out of all the Angel Men flankers, this one gets the most hype. Maybe Pure Malt also gets a lot of hype, but I feel like this one just gets a little bit more, and rightly so as well. Pure Havan is an absolute treat. It deserves all the hype and more. It's really affordable, and the bonus is it comes in a really nice rubber bottle. The next one is actually quite a recent purchase for me, and it's appeared on a ridiculous number of summer top 10 lists. From Giorgio Armani, it's Acqua di Gio Profumo. Okay, so it took me so long to buy this one because I'd smelled it in store a couple of times and it never blew my mind. I think it was almost overhyped. But the problem is when you're in store and you're smelling other things as well, and when you're smelling fragrances off strips, it doesn't do the fragrance justice. You've got to try and get it on skin if you can. I know it's difficult when you're smelling lots of things. This really came alive for me when I first started wearing it on my skin. I, I bought it because I thought I should have it in my collection and it gets talked about so positively. I really need to explore this fragrance and, and hopefully try and appreciate it. And that has happened. I think this is a great take on the masculine type freshy fragrance, but with this added incense accord, which makes it different and it stands out and I think it boosts the performance so I can see why this one gets the hype. It took me a good few wearings to really start to appreciate this but now I really enjoy it. At first the hype wasn't real, now I believe the hype. This is a beautiful summer fragrance and actually you can wear this all year round. Jean-Paul Gaultier's La Malle is a massively hyped fragrance but I didn't buy that one because of the hype. I kind of bought that just because my sister said it smelled amazing and all girls would love it 
in the world. So I just thought, hey, yeah, I, I have to have Lamal in my life. So I'm not talking about Lamal. This is a fragrance that I think is hyped more these days than the original Lamal. This is one of the flankers. I think it's hyped because it smells more modern and it is known to be a bit of a compliment getter. It is Ultramal. I blind bought this a few years ago. I believed in the hype and the hype was real because I wasn't disappointed. I love the hint that it has towards the original Lamal, but then it has this piercingly sweet pear note combined with this rich, smooth, sweet vanilla. I can see why people describe this as a sexy fragrance. I think it's the most popular flanker in the line, although the new Lamal Le Parfum may take that crown over time. It's a great night out fragrance. It's a big old crowd pleaser. So if you wear this, a few compliments will probably come flying your way. Great fun scent. The hype is real. Another recent purchase. I feel that this is the most hyped fragrance in Chanel's Allure line. It is Edition Blanche. <music> Lemon meringue pie baked to perfection by Chanel. This one is fresh and creamy. Oh, and incredibly wearable and it's addictive as well. It's got that addictive smell because it's got that sweetness. It smells a little bit gourmandish, but never so much so that it becomes too rich uh, and too heavy. It's still bright and uplifting and energizing. I actually prefer Allure Homme Sport Eau Extreme. I think it's a more versatile fragrance. I, I just love the scent, but this is also fantastic. And I feel that this is the one people seem to shout about more. Allure Homme Edition Blanche is a great summer scent. I'm glad I believed the hype. This one is another fragrance that I own the Perfume Parlor version first, smelled that, fell in love, decided, I needed a bottle. This is from Dolce & Gabbana and I would say it's probably the most sensual designer fragrance that I own. It's the one EDP. Okay, so it's not a beast mode fragrance, far from it. The performance on this is only average, but if you were to wear it for something like a date night, I think it would work really well. In here you've got grapefruit, orange blossom, cardamom, amber, tobacco, so really beautiful sensual note breakdown. It's ridiculously smooth but somehow it's got a vibrancy to it as well. Okay, it only projects for a couple of hours but if you've not won your date over in that time, it's not really the fault of the fragrance is it? The next one is yet again another fragrance that I owned from Perfume Parlor first. When I started out on this journey, I, I was buying a lot of fragrances from Perfume Parlor. That's kind of really what got me into this. So I smelled this one and enjoyed it so much that I bought a bottle straight away. It is Dior Sauvage. Oh, I'm talking about Sauvage on my channel. This is the Eau de Toilette and some people describe the opening of this as scratchy or screechy, often described as being a little bit metallic. I don't really get any of that. I find the opening of this perfectly pleasant. It's clean, it's fresh, it's simple, but it's an absolute crowd pleaser. Performance on this is outrageous. This must be one of those rare fragrances that has a pretty much beast mode performance with an Eau de Toilette concentration. If you're starting out on your fragrance collection, you probably want to keep things simple but effective. I think Sauvage would be a great place to start. The last one is an iconic fragrance that I just think is a beautiful masterpiece. It's from Tom Ford, which is one of my favorite brands. And this is arguably the most popular fragrance the brand has ever released. Black Orchid. Black Orchid is such a smooth and intoxicating blend of fruits and chocolate. It just oozes quality and sensuality. It's actually marketed, as you probably already know, as a female fragrance, but it's certainly a unisex fragrance. In fact, there are some clones of this that are marketed towards men, and I love wearing this. I think it's a really easy fragrance to wear. Some people maybe find it a little bit too floral, and that's absolutely fine, you know, each to their own. We all like different things, but I love it. I think this smells incredible on a woman. I love that it oozes confidence and sexiness. This fragrance is a perfect example of many people smelling it, loving it, and hyping it, and that is simply because it's a stunning fragrance. So there are seven of the most hyped fragrances that I own. For all of these, 
I believe the hype is real. Obviously, we all like different things, so I don't expect everyone to agree with me. If you decide to buy any of these based on this video, don't accuse me of hyping them up. Sample first, folks. Or buy the Perfume Parlor version, affiliate link in description. So let me know which your favorite hyped fragrances that you have in your collection are. If I don't own them, maybe I'll go and buy them if you hype them up enough. All right, that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for watching. Remember, keep tuning into FM, keep smelling good, and I'll see you in the next one.